the Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> the Great Gildersleeve is brought to you, partially transcribed, by the Kraft Foods Company. Are you using the new salad and cooking oil that was perfected in salad dressing headquarters? It's Kraft Oil, the most wonderful oil ever created for homemade salad dressing, for fine baking, and for frying. An exclusive Kraft process gives Kraft Oil a lighter body, and that's why it's different from ordinary oils. Kraft Oil blends faster and better with the other ingredients any recipe calls for. Get a bottle of lighter-bodied Kraft Oil when you're shopping tomorrow. They say competition is a healthy thing. If so, the great Gildersleeve should be in the pink because Mr. Sidney Tuttle has been giving him plenty of it since Leela Ransom came back to town. One way of pulling ahead of Sidney is to sport a new automobile. Leroy! Bertie! Yes? Come and see what I've got. Oh, boy, look at that job! <laughs> Bertie! Well, I, George, this makes him sit up and take notice. <laughs> man, man, ain't that something? Gosh, fire engine red. Yep. Where's the siren, Mr. Gillsley? Siren? You borrowed it from the fire chief, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's red hot, but I didn't get it from the fire department. <laughs> what did you buy it? Now, come on, let me ride to the office with you. Hey, let me get behind the wheel. No, wait a minute, wait a minute, Leroy. I haven't bought it yet. You haven't? I want to see if everybody likes it. We like it. That's some chariot. Will it fit in the garage? When you have a car like this, Bertie, you usually park it out front where everybody can see it. <laughs> yes, <Yeah. laughs> Come on, Uncle. Let's go buy it. How much does it cost? You know, the man said I could take it for $500 down and ninety two forty six a month for three years. Wow. <laughs> How you going to buy gas? Well... Oh, what the heck? It's worth it just to sit in. Come on, Uncle, let's go buy it. But everybody hasn't seen it yet, my boy. Who else is there? Well, I thought I'd drive around the corner and let Mrs. Ransom take a gander at it. After all, she'll be riding in it, too. Yes, sir. So that's why you're getting it. Not at all. Sidney Tuttle has you worried. This car worried Mr. Sidney Tuttle. <laughs> <laughs> He's really got you pressing, hasn't he, Yonk? Leroy Sidney Tuttle doesn't worry me one bit. <laughs> <laughs> if Leela had rather walk with Tuttle than ride in a fire engine red car with a water commissioner, there's nothing more I can do about it. Yeah, I mean... You mean you've shot the works, huh? <laughs> well, I think I'll drive around to Leela's house and see how she likes it. Hey, can I go with you, Yonk? Well... Anybody interested in dropping me off at the market in their fire-engine red automobile? Well, hop in and we'll show it to Leela on the way to the market. Oh, boy. Thank you, sir. Gosh, look at the fancy upholstery. Sit down, Leroy. I'm taking off. My, my. Ain't this smooth. Mr. Gillespie's going to leave Mr. Tuttle way behind in the dust. Yep, he's smooth. My boy, Sidney never really got started. He's hardly known Leela a week. She's been my girl for years. Step on it, Unc. Leroy, I'm turning a corner. Let me blow the horn to let her know we're coming. Leroy, Leroy, stop it. I want this to be a surprise. I want to sneak up on it. In a car this color? <laughs> yes, yes. Now, watch how smoothly it stops. Keen. <laughs> I'm parking on a cloud. <laughs> Say, is that Leela on the porch? No, so that's the cleaning woman. Oh. There's somebody in the backyard. I'm beating a rug. Ain't that Mr. Tuttle? Hey, it is Sidney. Lero, you must be mistaken. No, take a good look. Is that sneaky Sidney all right? <laughs> I wonder what he's doing beating Leela's rug at 10 o'clock in the morning. Maybe he's off his rocker. Maybe he's... <laughs> Maybe he's smarter than Mr. Gillespie thought he was. 
Maybe if I'm smart, I won't buy this car. Aren't you going to take Mrs. Ransom for a ride? Leroy, I'm the one who's being taken for a ride. I wonder what Sidney was doing over there, Unc. Leroy, I haven't time to worry about it. I have work to do. If I were you, I'd worry about it. Please, Leroy, sit down and be quiet. I'm going to sharpen my pencil and get to this water report. Aren't you jealous? My boy, a long time ago, I learned to put first things first. When there's work to be done, I do it. I put Sidney and Mrs. Ransom completely out of my mind. Unc. Yes, my boy. You're sharpening your fountain pen. (laughs) Oh, well, natural mistake. (laughs) They look alike. Oh, brother, and you're not worried. Well, let's see. Where was I? Sharpening your fountain pen. <laughs> okay. Now then. You're not going to get anything done until you find out what's going on over there. If I were you, I'd phone Mrs. Ransom. I'll do no such thing. Now let me concentrate on this report. Okay. You know what could have happened? Yep, that's just about what happened. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. I'll bet Mrs. Ransom and Sidney are low. <laughs> Broke my pencil. Confound it, Leroy. Well, you didn't see her yesterday. They could have eloped last night. That's ridiculous. Yeah? He was beating the rug, wasn't he? She's got him tamed and doing the chores already. <laughs> oh. Why don't you phone her and find out when they got hitched? If Leela has anything to tell me, she can phone me. She probably can't face you. Well, she's done something she's ashamed of, such as eloping. It's up to her to get in touch with me. After all, I'm her best boyfriend. Maybe Sidney won't let her. She has no right to keep her from telling me if they elope. You're right, Uncle. Get on the phone. That's the last thing I do. How do you like that, Leela? Coming all the way from Savannah just to run away with Sidney. Yeah. She can't do that to me. Give me that phone. Oh, boy, can I get on the extension? No. (laughs) Of course, I may be assuming too much. Leela may have some simple explanation. Hello? Hey, hello? Hello? I must have the wrong number. What number were you calling? Uh, I was calling Hibiscus 901. This is Hibiscus 901. Oh, What's up, Unc? Sidney answered the phone. Anything I can do for you? I'd like to speak to Mrs. Ransom. Oh, it's you, Throck. Yeah. Is that you, Sidney? Yes, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> what can I do for you, Throck? Yeah, I thought I'd like to talk to Leela. Uh, Leela isn't home at the moment. She isn't? Shall I tell her you called? You might as well, I guess. Sorry, Throck. I'll bet he is. No use trying to work at the office until I find out what's happened over at Leela's. I think I'll stop it in Peavy's. Maybe he knows something. Hello, Peavy. Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. What can I do for you today? Nothing. I don't want to buy a thing. I wonder why he comes in if he doesn't want to buy anything. I think I'll sit for a while. Very well. Just likes to loaf, I guess. What did you say, Peavy? No, I, I was just asking myself a question. Maybe I can answer it. I've already answered it. <laughs> Oh, I... I could use a little information, Petey. Very well, I'll put some information in the bottle. What? Cork it up and that will be 60 cents. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Peavy, you don't know what information I want. And you don't know what I put in the bottle, either. <laughs> All right, Petey. <laughs> what do you want to know, Mr. Gildersleeve? Well, have you seen Leela lately? Yes, I saw her on the street yesterday. Oh? What'd she have to say? I didn't speak to her. In fact, I pretended I didn't see her. Why, Peavy? Mrs. Peavy was with me. (laughs) 
What difference would that make? Well, the last time Mrs. Peavy and I met Mrs. Rancham on the street, she chucked me under the chin and said, Hello, you sweet little old man, you. <laughs> she did? Mrs. Peavy has not, never let me hear the last of that. <laughs> Peavy, I'm a little worried. Mrs. Rancham, I take it? Yeah. Guess what I saw this morning? Mm, no telling. And I passed Leela's and saw Sidney Tuttle out in the yard beating her rug. How's that? That's right. Leroy suggested they may be married. What do you think, Peavy? Well, no, I never beat any rugs until after I married Mrs. Peavy. <laughs> On the other hand, I can't imagine a clever woman like Mrs. Ransom buying a license for an irresponsible fellow like Sidney. Yeah, she'd have to pay for everything, all right. But Leela's pretty discerning. Yes, she is. If she were going to marry anybody around here, she'd pick me. <laughs> no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> No help. Well, Mr. Gildersleeve, if I was as wrought up as you, I'd hightail it over there and find out what's happened. Uh-oh. I won't have to. Here comes Leela. Oh, that's right, Martin. Hello, Zaya. Hello, Leela. How are you, Mr. Peavy? No, fine, thank you. You sweet little old man, you. <laughs> <laughs> Martin, I haven't seen you around for a whole day. I thought you'd at least call, Leela. Well, I did call. I left a message. But the person who answered the phone apparently didn't want me to talk to. It must have been the cleaning woman. It was not a woman. I drove by your house this morning, but I could see it wasn't the time to stop. Well, good gracious, why not? Leela, how does it happen that Sidney Tuttle has taken over at your house? Sidney? Answering the phone... Beating the rugs? Why, Throck Martin, I declare I do believe you're jealous. <laughs> Me? Jealous? I have the jealous bone in my body. We've just been wondering what this is all about, haven't we, Petey? Mm, yes. Yeah. <laughs> but it hasn't worried me for one minute. Has it, Petey? <laughs> Leela, it's rumored, at least I've heard, that something terrible has happened. Really, Throckmorton? Tell me the truth. Have you and Sidney eloped? <laughs> Throckmorton, that's the silliest thing I ever heard. I think so, too. But have you? Well, I haven't eloped since I was a flighty slip of a girl. <laughs> but Leela has settled down since then. <laughs> Does that answer your question, Throckmorton? Not exactly. What is Sidney doing over at your house? Well, Throckmorton, you know what a dreadful condition the place was in when I came back from Savannah after four years, and, and Sidney was gallant enough to offer to move some of the heavy furniture and do a few things the cleaning woman and I couldn't do. Is that all? Of course. A girl doesn't have to fall in love with every piano mover that comes along. Well, you see, Peavy, you were worried about nothing. Me? <laughs> I'm terribly flattered, Trot Martin, that you've been so concerned about me. But you should know after all these years the place you have in Leela's affection. <laughs> Why, George, <laughs> isn't Lila wonderful, Peavy? Well, Mrs. Peavy isn't here yet. She is. <laughs> oh, thank you, Mr. Peavy. And Throck Martin, you're pretty wonderful yourself. Thank you. Uh, by the way, what kind of cigars do you smoke? Me? Here's his brand right here, Mrs. Ransom. I'll take the whole box. Very well. Lilla, you shouldn't do that. I want to do something nice. After all, Sidney is working so hard. What? And I forgot the name of the cigars he likes, but he says he smokes your brand. She... <laughs> Gildersleeve will return in just a moment. Wouldn't you like to feast your family with the most delicious spice cake you've ever baked? A lighter, fluffier kind of spice cake created in the famous craft kitchens? 
It's spicy with cinnamon, cloves, and nutmeg, but it owes its feathery, moist texture to one special ingredient, new lighter-bodied craft oil. When you use craft oil as your liquid shortening, you'll be thrilled with what happens. Craft oil is made by an exclusive, superfining process. It's an oil unlike any other you've ever used before. Lighter-bodied craft oil blends better and faster with other ingredients. Shortening is distributed evenly throughout the batter. There's shortening in every crumb of your cake. That means cakes made with craft oil stay deliciously tender and moist day after day. They don't dry out the way ordinary cakes do. I hope you'll sit down right tonight and write for the Kraft Oil Spice Cake Recipe. It's easy to follow, and it bakes in a 10 by 4 inch tube pan. Just drop a postcard to Kraft Kitchens, Kraft Foods Company, Chicago 90, Illinois. We'll also send you the recipe for caramel Philly frosting, developed especially for this spice cake. That address is Kraft Kitchens... Kraft Foods Company, Chicago 90, Illinois. And tomorrow, be sure to get a bottle of Kraft Oil, the most wonderful oil ever created for baking, frying, and salad dressings. Lighter-bodied Kraft Oil. Well, let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. It would seem that his rival, Sidney Tuttle, got the jump on him when he offered to help Leela Ransom reopen her house. Our water commissioner may have lost the first round, but he's coming out strong for the second. My right, George, there's only one thing to do. Get over there and start cleaning. Here's your white cover out, Miss Gilsey. Oh, thank you, Bertie. I can't understand why Leela didn't ask me if she needed help. Well, maybe Mr. Tuttle just saw the opportunity and grabbed it. Opportunist. Parking on Leela's porch. That Mr. Tuttle's fast on his feet. If you're going to keep up with him, you got to keep on the move. Yeah, I guess so, Bertie. Yes, sir. If you're going to win the race, you got to beat a rabbit because Mr. Tuttle ain't going to beat a turtle. He's got a shell like one. Yes, sir, Mr. Gillespie. you got to get up and go because Mr. Tuttle ain't no turtle. Yeah, I know, Bertie. I know there's one thing you got to be that's up and at him because Mr. Tuttle ain't no turtle. Yeah, all right, Bertie. Mr. Gillespie, you know why you got to hustle to win the race? Yes, Bertie. That's right, because Mr. Tuttle ain't no turtle. <laughs> Gee, Bertie takes a dim view of my chances. Hey, wait a minute. What am I worried about? The turtle won the race. I better get into these coveralls. Hi, Unc. Hello, Leroy. What's Bertie laughing at? Oh, I see. <laughs> Leroy, what's so funny about putting on coveralls? Is that what you're doing? I thought you were putting up a tent. <laughs> Yes, yes. I'm going over to help Leela clean her house. You're going to work? You are getting panicky. Not at all. It's just a gallant thing to do. Yeah? Well, if you're going to work, why are you putting the coveralls over your blue serge suit? Well, when the work is done, I can slip out of my coveralls and be ready for the evening. Like a butterfly coming out of a cocoon. What a character. <laughs> Ready and raring to go. Won't Leela be surprised when she sees me after she opens the door? Hello. Well, hello. Oop, Sydney. I'm sorry, we don't need any milk today. I'm not the milkman. Oh, it's the water boy. <laughs> Sydney. <laughs> Come in, Throck. I'm glad you stopped by. Oh? I need somebody to move the stove. Yes, yes. Leela, we have company. What? Martin. Hello, Leela. I came over to help. Well, how wonderful. This way to the stove, Brock. I know where it is. I declare I'm the luckiest girl in the world to have two such big, strong helpers. Well, I wish I'd thought of it before. Uh, let me do the thinking, Throck. You lift the stove. Um, I want it... <laughs> I want it a little closer to the refrigerator, boys. It's as good as done. Sidney, grab the other end. Uh, Throck, you have on the work clothes. Yeah, but come on, Leela. We'll hang the pictures in the parlor. Well, I must make my parlor presentable if I don't do another thing. I come over here to be with Leela, and I'm stuck with the stove. <laughs> <laughs> You're heavy. 
bathrobe. Oven door came open. Did the stove fall on you, Throck? No, no. I bet he wishes it had. <laughs> to heck with the kitchen. I'm going in the parlor, too. That city isn't going to sidetrack me. I wonder if he's really hanging pictures. Does that look straight, Leela? Mm, I think so. Looks crooked from here. <laughs> now, you come and hold the picture. All right. Uh, do you mind if I put my arm around your shoulders while I tighten the wire? No, but it's a silly way to hang a picture. <laughs> I better break this up. Leela! Oh, it's Throckmorton. You bet. Uh, Throck, did you move the stove? Well, I just had a good idea. Let's work on one room at a time. All of us. Hmm, why don't we do that? Then we can all be together. Yeah, it's a good idea. Uh, Throckmorton, you have on the dirty clothes. How about crawling behind the couch and plugging in this lamp cord? <laughs> well... Uh, be careful, Throckmorton. You can get a shock with that cord. You can? It blows out the fuse. Uh, go ahead, Throck. You try it this time. Nah. I'll dust off the phonograph. Straighten up the record. I'll dust the rest of the room. Hey, let's put on a record. Sidney, please stand aside. There's work to be done. Oh, this is just what you need, Throck. Chickens lay more eggs and cows give more milk when there's music. I'm not a cow. <laughs> You're probably not a rumba dancer either. What? Leela? May I have this dance? Uh-oh. Well, you know how I love to dance, Sidney, but we just must go on with the dustbin. You had a girl, Lita. Well, why not dust while we dance? Well... What a pushy pest. <laughs> why, Sidney, you dance divinely. <laughs> I'm just a Latin at heart. <laughs> da -da, da -da 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 -da. Look at him, dancing her right out of the room. <laughs> Oh! That does it. I'll stop the music. I'll plug in the lamp and blow the fuse. Oh! <laughs> Darn that Sydney. Flipping a coin to see who cleans the basement. I wonder if his quarter had two heads. Ashes flying everywhere. I, 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 Bless you. Right? Oh, we are. I got your call. I came right over. You're a good boy. How do we stick you down here in the boiler room? Never mind. There's a lot of work to be done, and I need your help so I can get back up there with Leela. He isn't lonesome. Well. When I passed the window, they were moving the love seat. Oh, my goodness. Why do you put up with this, huh? Why don't you get rid of Sidney? My boy, that's easier said than done. Why don't you go upstairs and punch him in the nose? Well, he's been sticking so close to Leela, I might hit her. Oh, brother. He's really got you going, hasn't he? Yeah, and I can't give him any competition until the work is cleaned up. I'm scheduled to paint the kitchen woodwork next. Yeah? Why don't you go up and do that? Well, ordinarily I'd try to pry a buck out of you, but this time I haven't got the heart. Thank you, my boy. Well, basement's clean at last. Say, I was down there so long I didn't realize it's gotten dark. I wonder how Leroy is doing in the kitchen. Hi, huh? Well, Leroy, woodwork looks nice. Yeah, just finishing. Where are Sidney and Leela? Sidney went home. He did? It seems he got some paint down the front of his suit. Oh? <laughs> oh. Aunt, you're going to hate me for this. Leroy, what happened? Well, I called for Sidney to come see how I was doing with the paint. Yes? And just as I was painting the door... He opened it. <laughs> <laughs> what a fine boy. Yeah. <laughs> right, Joe, you deserve a reward. They take these coveralls home, and I think you'll find a dollar in one of the pockets. King, can I come home yet? 
Well, I'm dressed for the evening, remember? Oh, yeah, I forgot. The Cinderella man. <laughs> yep. So long, my boy. Good luck, huh? Oh, Leela! In the power of Scott Martin. Well, relaxing, I see. <sighs> I'm just exhausted. It's been such a strenuous day. My, you look nice in your blue suit. Thank you. <laughs> Come sit beside Leela. Good idea. <laughs> you deserve to relax, too. This is more like it. I think so. (sighs) (laughs) Moments like this make me glad I came back to Summerfield. Me too. Strike my own. Yes, Leela? Lean a little closer to me, will you? You bet. There's a little smidgen of coal dust on your cheek. Oh? Uh, where's my handkerchief? Let me dust it off. Now, hold still. I'm holding. But I can't hold out against that perfume. <laughs> there. That does it. I'll say. You know, Rock Martin, I can't help thinking how funny Sidney looked when he went home with that streak of white paint on him. <laughs> well, let's forget about Sidney. Let's not spoil this wonderful evening. You two have worked so hard, I thought I'd invite you both for dinner. Both of us? Mm-hmm. Sidney said he'd come back late if he saw the lights on. He did. Excuse me while I plug in the lamp behind the couch. But, Rock Martin! Oh, I... You blew out all the lights. You bet. Yeah, let's go out to dinner. <laughs> the Great Gildersleeve will be right back. There's a wonderful new oil that does wonderful new things for homemade salad dressings, baking, and frying. It's craft oil, the oil that's super fine to make it lighter bodied. Because craft oil is a lighter bodied oil, it blends faster and better with other ingredients, makes smoother, tastier French dressings, makes cakes and cookies that stay fresh and moist day after day, gives fried foods a tender crispness. Better begin using lighter bodied craft oil in your kitchen. Get a bottle tomorrow. Yes, Bertie? When you finish breakfast, would you mind fixing this light cord? Light cord? <laughs> There's a shot in it. Bertie, when I was over at Mrs. Ransom's yesterday, I had all the experience I want with short circuits. <laughs> well, any time you round Mrs. Ransom, there's plenty of electricity. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Uncle, you got a telegram. Oh? Well, let's see it, my boy. Well, it's from Cousin Bert. Yeah? All the way from Canada? Yeah, let's see what he says. I'm sending you a little surprise... From the Great Dominion of Canada. Regards, Bert. Gosh, I wonder what it is. Well, it could be anything. Cousin Bert has been quite successful in Canada. He pioneered in the Great Northwest. Maybe he's sending you some furs. Could be. What do you think, Bertie? <laughs> Maybe he's sending you one of them mounted policemen. <laughs> what would you do with a mounted policeman? Put him over the mantle? <laughs> Leroy. I guess we'll just have to wait until next week and see. Good night, folks. The Great Gilded Sleeve is played by Willard Waterman. The show is written by John Elliott and Andy White. Included in the cast are Walter Chetley, William Randolph, Shirley Mitchell, Byron Kane, and Dick LeGrand. Musical compositions by Jack Neekin. This is John Houston saying good night for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next week and every week for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. What goes into a perfect sandwich? Maybe it's roast beef or savory baked ham. 
Whatever your favorite, the perfect meat sandwich needs the perfect mustard. Kraft prepared mustard. For when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. You can take your choice of two kinds of Kraft mustard. Mild Kraft mustard is smooth and delicately spiced. Or if you like your mustard with extra pep, try Kraft mustard with snappy horseradish added. Keep them both on hand and keep everyone in the family happy. Next time, get Kraft prepared mustard. Tonight, play You Bet Your Life on NBC. 